So now we actually want to be able to calculate binomial probabilities using the formula, but the first thing we need to do is talk about the concept of combinations. And this is the number of ways that x things can happen out of n trials. So the same x and n we were talking about in the prior section. So for example, the number of ways that I can get one correct answer on a three question true false test. Now, if I wanted to know that, I could do the sample space. I could say that there were all false answers, or maybe there was only one true answer. But remember, that true could have been the first question, the second question, or the third question. Or maybe there was two right answers, two trues, <clears throat> the first two, the ends, the last two, or maybe they were all true. So I have the whole sample space here. But if I wanted to find the number of ways that I have only one right answer out of the three questions, then you can see it's just one particular set of items from the sample space. And so there are three ways this could happen. But the important thing is I didn't need to list everything out there. There's a better way to have found out there were three ways without listing the entire sample space. So as I mentioned, there's actually a formula to find the number for n trials, in our case three questions, to find the number of ways of getting x successes. The formula reads n factorial divided by the quantity n minus x factorial times x factorial. And I'm guessing most of you haven't even seen a factorial. That exclamation mark at the end of those letters is a math operator telling you to perform a specific multiplication process. But don't sweat the formula, remember? Instead of the formula, we're just gonna use this button on your calculator. So somewhere there should be a button that is a lowercase n, an uppercase c, and then, well actually they're not necessarily lowercase, like a subscript of an n and an r with a c. So n still stands for the same thing, the fixed number of trials. Instead of x, we use r for the number of successes. And the C stands for combination. You actually probably see a button right next to it or maybe above or below it on your calculator that's got a P in the middle instead, which is permutation, which is something else. Um, and then again, how you use it on your calculator is gonna be different. I have a TI-83+, plus, and I have to hit the math button, then I have to scroll over to the PRB button, then I have to scroll down to the NCR button. But for me, I'm gonna hit the three first, then I enter, push my NCR button, then I'm gonna hit the one button, and then I hit you know equals or enters, depends on what it is on your calculator, and a three comes up. You know, some calculators you hit NCR first, and then you hit three comma one, or you hit the NCR, the three, and then the one, the NCR. I've seen all sorts of combinations, so check with somebody on how to use your calculator. I'm sure you can Google it or find it on YouTube. But let's go ahead and practice a couple more problems. So if I have n trials, I'm looking at n cats, and I wanna find the probability that three of them have stripes on their tails, whatever it is. Instead of making the sample space of all four cats, what I'm gonna end up doing is using the button and find out that there's four ways that out of four cats, three of them could have stripes on their tails or whatever I'm looking for. Question B. I have six items I'm looking at, and what if I want four of them to be successful? So I'm gonna push my six, NCR, and four, and I find out there's 15 different ways. Pretty big number, and if I was trying to make the whole sample space to get there, that has got to be a huge sample space. 